Good morning. Everything came in. I had a scat rotating assembly right. Uh, dome pistons, fit to file rings, uh, forge crank. You know everything. Everything you need to make that uh, for the 489 were built. So I had some debate when when cutting these rings. Right. It's pretty easy. One, two, three. Can't screw it up. But going from the directions, right? Because your second ring is dual hatted right it's an oil scraper and it also catching some of the compression right uh, what little blow by is getting by your first ring can get cut between your first and second ring but Molly gives you the instructions it's pretty straightforward it says street and strip use you know here's the um, your multiplication factor for that if you use nitrous you know you're gonna have a bigger gap it says that the second ring should be tighter than the first ring. If you look on any other engine though, right, what you'll see is the second ring is always has a wider gap than the first one. The issue with having a, a tighter gap between the first and second ring is that gases can get caught between the first and second ring, right, which causes your first ring to unseat. So that little blow by is getting by the top ring, which is normal, and since the second ring is now tighter, it's getting trapped between the two rings. I had an issue with that. I called Molly. The technician I talked to basically explained to me that uh, over the last 10 years, research has shown that having a greater gap on that second ring is more ideal for that situation. And also, when I was cutting these rings, right, when I was filing these rings, I was off on the first ring. Easy to file, they're not that hard, and uh, I just had too much of a gap. And he explained to me that uh, it doesn't become an issue until you go like 40 thousandths. Uh, once you're at 40 thousandths, then you can get a lot of blow-by and stuff like that. You know, when you're, when you're filing these rings, as long as you're over the minimum, which is what this calculation is for, he said this calculation is the bare minimum, you know, so when everything gets hot, the rings don't touch. He said, as long as you're over that minimum, and he said, uh, with your engine, I, I would do yours at uh, 22 to 24 thousandths ring gap. So, uh, that's where we're at. I, I don't have an issue with that. I'm going to go ahead and assemble all these parts, right? I'll have all my packs together. So what, what I mean by pack is I'll have a, a rod, rod and piston together with all the rings on it, and then we'll go through putting it through the engine. Um, I'll show you briefly how to put one together. Another thing, so I was really concerned, right, with the with the size of these domes. These are 18cc domes. So if you look at it, I was worried about the clearance, the intake clearance, because on these heads, this intake is actually sitting out. I have to have one side propped up, right? Because the intake, the intake valve is actually sitting through the head, sitting through the surface of the head. Uh, with the gasket, it's not going to go into the end of the deck. But uh, bare, right? No gasket. That that intake valve, the bottom of the intake valve, is definitely sticking past this head. And like I said, what I was concerned about was was whether at the at our overlap, right? Um, and again, the cam I got, I got a pretty aggressive cam. I think it's a 280, 290, or something like that. Uh, it's got a 112 overlap, and I did that for so I could run my EFI. But uh, and also, piston and valve clearance shouldn't be a problem at 112. It'll be less of a problem. But again, looking at this, right? This is an 18cc dome. It's not not that bad. I put it to the to the head, and and it looks like it's going to clear fine. But again, like I said, I I needed that cutout, and you can't tell by looking at the pictures because it's just a general picture in, in, the, uh, in the description. So again, here's that part number. And these are for 49, right? So we have a 4.25 stroke and 4.280 bore. Uh, this is the newest part number. There's an old part number uh, out there that uh, you'll find, but this is Molly's newest part number. They automatically match it when you order it. Again, I'll get this put together and I'll show you guys one thing at a time. All right, so I got all mine assembled already. We're gonna assemble one. I'll show you guys how to do it. 
Um, what you want to pay attention to again, I had to look at the uh, look at the crank right to make sure that this opening, if you look closely, one end is flared more so than the other. Right, there's a small flare on this end compared to the other side, right? And that's because of how it, how it sets up on the crank. So, what you want to make sure is that the the bigger flared end is opposite of the intake, right? Which is our uh, our bigger cutout. So this will go just like this, flared side on this side, right, intake on this side. So this piston and rod, if I called it a power pack earlier, I would, it's a diesel term, it refers to liner, piston, and uh, rod assembly, it's all in one. So ignore that. But, so when we assemble it, we're going to assemble it like this, right, we'll slide our wrist pin, our semi-floating wrist pin through, and uh, Here's the issue I had when I was putting it in, of course, because it's a, it's, a, it's a pain in the ass getting these clips in here, there's no, uh, if you look at the clip itself, there's no nowhere to grab it, right? It's just a smooth clip. So to do that, I use my lube, you can use whatever lube you want. Uh, as long as it's got zinc in it, I use STP for pretty much everything. Anyways, uh, so we take one clip, right? We're going to push this clip in because there's no other way, other way to do it that I, that I could uh, figure out. So, leave the opening out, right? And I push it in till it passes that ring, that cutout. So I have to go a little bit further. All right, so now when I twist this in place, I need to make sure that the, uh, that the opening part is gonna catch that lip. So I gotta push this a little bit further. All right, and I'm in. All right, so I'm gonna take my uh, the wrist pin, right? Lube it up too. Lube your friend, and I'm gonna slide it in the other way. So if you look at this, that uh, that clip is not seated in in the groove, right? I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's caught on the uh, on the opening. So I slide it in the other side, right? And I'm gonna hold my finger where that clip is, I'm going to hold it on the opening and I'm going to push it through until it clicks. It's in. Slide my pin back out. Alright, and I'm going to lube this, lube the connecting rod. Put some lube on the inside of this. Alright. And again, I'm going to make sure that that opening, which I turned around, the opening is opposite of this intake. Cut out. Put some more lube on my pen. Just be patient. Slide it all the way through. There we go. So now the fun begins. The only way I could find to do it is to get one end started. It's got a little divot here if you had to pry it out, right? So I'm going to use that divot to hold one end. Use a pair of pliers to pry it in. If I scratch up this coating, it's not a big deal. Uh, the protective coating on this is really for the cylinder and the skirt, right? So this is not going to hurt anything if I scratch it. So I'm going to pry on the outside of this uh, on the outside of this boss or support, right? Wrist pin support. And I'm gonna pry this pin into place. Now while I'm doing this, I'm pushing it in the groove with my other finger. It doesn't take a lot of prying. Just be patient. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Just work it into place, push it in there. Alright, from here it's close enough. I can push it in. There we go. As you can see, the pen scratched it up right here. The clip. Not a big deal, just make sure it's in place. Slide it back and forth. If you can, a little bit. Yep, yeah, it's in. Alright, so next we're going to put the piston rings on. If you've followed the directions, 
Right? It's pretty self-explanatory. Tells you which way which way everything should face. Uh, it refers to as the front of the engine, right? So we need to hold this as if it's facing to the front of the engine. So this is uh, this is bank two, right? There's bank one and bank two, right? Left and right side of the engine. We're gonna, this goes on the other side, so that's why I'm gonna hold this. If if you got it backwards, it's not a big deal as long as that first and second ring are uh, opposite, right? So on this setup, they're 180 degrees out. And then uh, the only thing different about this engine is it has a support rail, right? Because because this is a longer rod than normal, there's a, there's a cutout in this piston for the wrist pen to slide through. So this engine uses a support rail below the oil ring. So there's a divot in it. I want to make sure this divot is in that cutout. These are pretty flexible rings. Your uh, compression rings, your first and second ring, are not flexible. Just take your time, work it around. Right? And we're in. So again, on mine, I want to make sure that that divot is in, the, is in this cutout, right? There's a spot for it. There's a spot for the divot right here. So I just grab one end of that uh, ring and I slide it around to like see my divot. And there we go. Right there. See it? Alright, so I just push that all the way down until it's flush. Again, take your time. Looks good. Put some more lube on the outside. If you want to use motor oil for this, that's fine. We're going to use motor oil on the cylinders. You probably don't need it at all here, but uh, I think it helps slide this stuff in place and hold it in there while we're working on it. Alright, so again, I pay attention to which way I'm holding this, this uh, piston and rod. And I'm going to hold it in this hand the whole time. Alright, so I put the bottom oil oil rail ring in the spot it calls for. And again, I worked that around. Easy peasy. Sorry, I take that back. Before this ring, I have to slide in the oil ring itself because this has little uh, little holders on it to hold the outside rings. So for this one, it's at the uh, 90 position. All right, work that in place. Make sure it seats in there well, and I slide that other ring back in. That bottom oil ring. Nice and easy. Just be patient with this oil ring. It's it's a pain sometimes. Alright, so top one. Again. Just work it around. This is the point we need to stop here and make sure it seats right. So it shifts around good, moves as an assembly. Double check, make sure they're in the right spots. It's good. Second ring. Make sure that, that it says top, right? So over here we have a green label on our, uh, on our left side. And we make sure the top of the ring goes to the top of the cylinder. Again, this is not as flexible as the oil rings because of the carbon content in here, right? I've broken these before. Just be patient, take your time. Try and move it down as an assembly. Once you get that one end started, you can uh, fish it around. There we go. And again, make sure it moves freely. Right, this is where I find out if we filed, hand filed the end enough to make sure. 
that there's no burrs on it. Once that's done, we go to our number one. Again, make sure top's up. Green label's on the left. And here you go, top. It's 180 out on this on this engine. Or on this piston setup anyway. And again, trying to get most of it around the top of the cylinder before we slide it down into place, the top of the piston before we slide it down into place, which it is, so it's stretched out pretty good. Slide it down until it clips, and work it around. Make sure everything moves freely, which it does. We have top, second, 180 out, and then the oil is countered, and we don't worry about that rail support. The rail support's just to hold the uh, to give some support right here where the cutout is for that wrist pin. Next we're going to short block this engine, so we'll throw the crank in. We'll clean it first and uh, clean the cylinders again. Make sure that is as clean as possible before we put it together, you know, because we, we spent all that time uh, sliding rings in and out and filing them down. Alright, we're about to put the crankshaft up. When I sent this to the machine shop, all the caps were labeled. One, two, three, four, five, six. It, uh, again, I bought this engine used. I didn't know anything about it. It was half disassemb disassembled sitting in somebody's <laughs> closet. So, uh, all the caps were labeled, and I assumed that was correct, right? Well, when I dropped it off the machine shop, when they were checking it, two of the caps were actually labeled backwards. So they fixed that for me. It's one of the reasons why you, you know, just take it to the machine shop and have it checked out, right? So, uh, Went through, cleaned everything up. What I don't have right now is the uh, the one piece remain seal. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble it, but we're not gonna final torque it, right? We'll probably take it to 20 foot pounds or something like that, just to hold the crankshaft in place while it's all lubed up. And we'll go ahead and put these pistons and rings in. And then uh, I'll rotate it over and we'll, we'll call it a day. But, uh, when that remain seal comes in, then we'll uh, continue on. We'll put the remain seal in, uh, the pickup, uh, oil pickup, and uh, oil pen. So we went through, cleaned everything up, right? Made sure there's no debris in the bottom. Uh, cleaned both sides of this bearing. So I cleaned the surface, right? And the crankshaft bearing itself. It's got a protective coating on it, along with the crankshaft. So it's, it's a brand new forged crankshaft, obviously. But, uh, that protective coating they spray on it, we don't know how that's going to interact. I don't know if it's going to gum up or, or what it's going to do if I just lubed it, right? So just clean it to be sure. I have my uh, STP lube, right, that I used for the pistons and the uh, base on the wrist pins, right? And I just have what's left in the bowl. I'm going to go through and we're going to lube both sides of that, uh, both sides of the bearing surface. Well, what I mean by both sides are the cap and what's in the block. Uh, we want the back of these to be as dry as possible to limit the possibility of slipping. Right? We don't want to spin a bearing. We don't want to encourage it. It shouldn't happen. All we're going to do is, like I said, loop both sides of this, set this in, tap these caps down, and we'll take it to... And this thing is heavy. Be nice and gentle. The reason I got scat was because uh, I've never heard of anybody having any clearance issues with these connecting rods and the block. You know, because we do have a longer stroke. We also opted to get the longer rods, right? Which, which uh, should help us out for clearance too. So, when you take them off, make sure you number them or you have them in a certain order. Have them in the correct order. I put a new O-ring in the bottom of this one. Alright, so now that I relubed everything, I'll go ahead and tap these tap these down all right so we're just gonna go to 10 right
We'll go ahead and take it to 25. And again, I'm coming back to that, so we'll do final torque later. Uh, but, we make sure it spins freely. What she does, as you can see, I put that lube all over these. When we redo these, we'll put some, uh, we'll use engine oil on the bolts, like you're supposed to. Cool. All right, so I went through and installed all, all the, uh, the pistons, right? So I'll show you the last one. The cat comes torqued together. So just simply untorque that. Wiggle this cap loose. And when you put it back together, there's numbers stamped on, 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 the, on this side and not this side, so you know which way to put it back in. Again, since now we touch the inside of this cap, we'll have to wipe it off, right? Before we put our bearing in. So for this side, we're going to go ahead and put the bearing in. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, flanged in to flanged in. Put a little lube on it, or a lot of lube. We already have the crankshaft lube, so this will be fine. We're going to take our ring compressor. If you guys have, uh, I say the best option is not to use these. I like to use a sleeve. But the problem with the sleeve is it's only set up for that size bore. So before we put that on, we're going to go through and check our rings again. Make sure they're all in the right spot. This oil ring can be a pain, so again I make sure the linings markings are right. And that it's not overlapped anywhere. And everything moves freely, so that's good. Take our sleeve and make sure that the bottom end's down. Right, it's labeled. There's already lube on this, it's covered in motor oil. When I'm doing this, there's a small opening right here. I want that gap to be right here so I can see it. Again, compress it down, looks good. Make sure that this intake valve is towards the front of the engine, right? And then our opening at the bottom, right? Remember our wide den is facing the edge of the crank that it's going to be touching. This flatter side is going to touch the other. Uh, piston rod. Nice and slow, make sure you have tons of uh, oil on the piston itself. Take your time getting it in there, good. I take the edge of my dead flow hammer, I use the handle, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it down until we get, till we get uh, closer to the cylinder. Right, we're close. I go underneath, make sure there's no interference. Looks good. But I'm going to push down on this ring compressor itself around the outside so I make sure that it's smooth against the block. If I don't push down on this, the oil ring could catch. Or the oil rail ring and then the oil ring. Oil, the oil ring's a pain in the ass. So I push down. Nice and easy. Once you're in, you're in. You're going to go from the other side, right? So I'm going to grab the rod on the other side and guide it down onto the crank. All right. From here, we'll rotate the engine over. Put this bearing in correctly. Again, I lube this. As you can see, I already have lube on the crank. You want to tap this on. You don't want to pull this on with the bolts. And you don't need this big of a dead blow. All right, so from here, I'm going to take my uh, fastener assembly lube. Get it in the threads, get it around the head, and I get it down. It's important to snug it up on both sides evenly, because if it's not seated all the way, we don't want to pull it into place and distort that uh, the sleeve that's on the inside of these. So ours is set at 50 foot-pounds. Right, I do I do these in stages. I don't think you have to. It's just uh, just a habit for me. I'm gonna take it to 20. And I know it was at 20 because I was reading the uh, the gauge. So that was it. I took them to 20, and then when you heard the beep, that was 50. Again, we're waiting on this rear main seal. When this rear main seal comes in, I'll take this apart. 
uh, loosen this up and slide that seal in, get RTV sealing around both sides and uh, some lube on the crank itself.